Hey everybody, I'm Monty Mont. I'm Tiff. I'm Brandon Watson. And these are a few of our favorite scenes. There we go. See, yeah, yeah, there you go. I like that. I like that. Good. <laughs> Yo, you ready for mine, Tiff? Let's go. Never kept up with the latest. Never tried to be the greatest. But let's be honest. Yes, we want this. Oh. What's up, guys? We are here. It's our favorite scenes. It's my Tiff, Monty, and Tiff. Tiff, how you doing? I'm all right. How are you? Good, 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 good. Through the power of television, you guys don't know what we've had to go through this morning. <laughs> it's been a lot. Seriously. <laughs> but we are excited. I have a great guest, or we have a great guest for you guys today. Mr. Brandon Watson is on with us today. Brandon, how you doing this morning, man? I'm good, man. I'm feeling good. Thank you so much for reaching out and having me on your show. I I love my favorite part, besides, of course, leading worship and, and doing music, is connecting with radio stations um, and just kind of doing the dialogue. I love I love doing this. So this is really what like gets me going, is connecting with, with people like y'all. Man, man, so happy to have you. yes, yeah. thank you so much for coming on and thank you for sticking with us. We were going to do it last week and, you know, you know, the devil been busy, man. You know, he been out here. He, he got my man sick and Tiff has some warfare, Ooh. but we're here. We're here. Oh. We're here. Yeah. We're here. We're ready for it. We always start out. The show is called Our Favorite Sings and we love to just find out what's one of your favorite songs, what's in the high rotation? What is one of your all time top 10, your workout song or your cruising in your car song or your worship song, whatever. What's one of your favorite scenes, Brandon? Man, um, it, it's kind of, so, I mean, I have a lot of favorite songs. That's the thing. It's like, I can't say this is my number one or this is my number five or whatever, but oh, I, I can, I, I always go to my dude Todd Delaney's "Your Great Name." I wow. love that song. I mean, I love to I love to play it. I love to sing it. I love to listen to it. But I'm always on that song. That song's like in my top rotation all the time. Todd is that is one. that is an excellent song. We do that here at my church, and it is. Um, I'll tell you what, Todd. Man, Todd doing some big things out here. His his album, yeah. that's one of those albums where top to bottom, I love the whole album. And, and yeah. you always want to be complimentary of people's work, but you know, you can't always say that <laughs> about every album like you love all, but I do, I love all the tracks, but your great name is, is really excellent. That's a good one. Brandon, when did you realize that music is what what it is that you wanted to do? Um, I was pretty young. I like I, I don't know if if uh, you read a little bit of my bio or not, but I, I play multiple instruments. Uh, my first instrument was actually drums. So I was like two years old, holding a pair of drumsticks, walking around the house, like just, you know, beating on stuff. And then like literally I was like five, six, seven. Um, I was setting up a keyboard and, you know, leading worship in my living room as a little kid, you know. And so it's it's always been a part of who I was. Um, my, my parents are pastors. Um, they've been pastoring my, my entire life. So I'm a PK, uh, grew up in church and ministry. And so um, how I kind of got involved was I started leading worship when I was 12 and playing guitar um, because there was a need for it. Like I, it was a small church. Nobody else could do it. So I was like, well, I'm going to learn how to sing. I'm going to learn how to play guitar. Um, and I I started leading worship. Now, what I didn't know was that the call of God and the anointing that was going to be on my life for it how heavy that was. Um, I just kind of took it for granted because it was just like, well, you know, I'm, I'm just singing and I'm just, you know, worshiping the Lord in front of people. But I literally, I know, and, and I started noticing like things like happen when I, when I worship the Lord, like people get healed and, you know, like there's miraculous things that are taking place <laughs> while I worship. And so I started really noticing that. And I started being like, okay, God, you know, why, why is that? you know, a thing. And so, um, you know, God's always gave me this word and it stuck with me for a long time. And, you know, the Bible says God was with David and God was with David. And I began to say, well, why, why were you always with David, God? And he told me because he was always with me and you're always with me. And nice. so that really made sense to me of like, wow, okay. You know, you know, 
I am with you. You know, I do set alone time with God and, and really, I mean, and it's not changed over, I've been, you know, professional touring musician now for 10 years. Um, and I know how important my alone time with God is, um, above all else, above, you know, the busyness of the traveling and production and studio, this and that, like, if I'm not giving God his time, then it's yeah. for nothing. What I'm doing is for nothing, you know? So that that's really kind of when I decided and it made sense of music is really what I want to do. That is awesome. So, Lord, my, you see my glasses over there? Goodness. I need my, I don't, you see my clear ones on? Lord, this is the tight one. <laughs> okay. This is glasses. Someone give him his glasses. Yeah. <laughs> Some, no, somebody no. give him his glasses. Yeah. Now, now you, I don't want you guys to get it twisted. Like, Brandon is really blowing up out here, and I'm going to get to his stuff really quick. But you're a musician, as you said. Also, you write, and we're going to get a little bit more to that. But I want to, I would love to ask songwriters, do you have kind of a certain technique? Is there a thing that you like to do? I've talked to some people where he's like, some people like to get away, block everything out and write. Other people are like, man, I'm in the car. Something inspired me. I get the iPhone out. I, you know, what is kind of your technique when you're writing? Right. Um, it, it's really funny because I'm ADD. I'm not medically like, you know, they, they, I didn't go to a doctor and they said, you're ADD. But I, I definitely know that I'm ADD. So for me to do anything, like whether that's working on something, I constantly have to have something going on in the background, whether it's TV on or worship music playing or some type of music playing, you know, something has to be stimulating my mind as I'm working. And so for my writing, I noticed, you know, I wanted to do that technique of like, I'm going to shut everything out. I'm going to put a candle on, you know, whatever. I'm going to make it all like God, you know, be with me as I write the song and nothing would ever come out yeah. because I realized that's not me. That's not how I, that's not how I really am. And so, you know, with my songwriting, I still have to be authentic to who I am as a person and how I function. And then, you know, things kind of just happen organically. So for me, I've gotten songs like on airplanes. Airplanes is my thing. When I'm traveling in the air, I've written multiple songs, multiple ideas sitting in an airplane seat um, in, the, in the car while, I, you know, I'm riding in the car or whatever. Something will just hit me. Or, you know, I'll hit, I'll hear someone else's song and it'll just spark something and it'll be completely different than what I heard, but I basically get like a download and I just start writing. And so it's just really weird. Um, so that's kind of how my approach is. Everybody's approach is different though. You know, I really strongly believe in co-writing. I love co-writes. Um, I, I co-write with, with my team, um, with my singers. And, I, you know, I really love the, the playing off of each other. And, you know, I, so any young artist, I always strongly encourage, like, hey, get with somebody that's a strong writer and do some co-writes because it'll help you out and give you tools to write alone. Wow. That's, that's good. That's good. Okay. So just to go back a little, because you touched on this uh, briefly, you, you were talking about you noticed when you were young, when you were worshiping, that things would happen. People would be delivered and, and miracles would take place. And yeah. now that you're touring and everything, how does it feel to see your music ministry touching the lives of so many people? Uh, it's a very humbling experience for me. You know, I, I, I live in San Antonio, Texas. I've been born and raised in Texas. Um, I've always wanted to, to be on the road and travel and do this. I never, and I, and the thing was, you know, I felt like I had a big dream at a very young age and, and, and coming from a small church and, and not knowing how to achieve the dream or achieve the promise of God. Cause you know, multiple times things were prophesied over me and it's always the same word. It was always the same thing. Different people, no connections, same God, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like, I know that that was going to happen. I knew that I was going to do what I'm doing now. I didn't know that every single time I would dream something, it still wasn't big enough. It still wasn't big enough. So God would always say, dream bigger, dream bigger. And I'm like, God, I have a pretty big dream. Like, you know, I, and I'll, I'll write it down. I'll talk about it. And I'm like, how are you going to blow my mind with this? Like, I don't even understand it. But the thing that is always, I still, still get very, very, um, 
nostalgic about it because I grew up in revival, grew up in outpouring of God at a very young age and seeing a move of God um, and, and it really, really putting something in my heart and my soul of hungering and thirsting for the presence of God in that way, seeing the weighty presence of his glory. And so now everywhere that I go and every platform that I step on, whether it's a show or a concert, at some point, I'm going to get into that, that, that stream and we're going to go somewhere. And, yeah. you know, it's a very humbling experience now to, to look out and see people sing, you know, the songs God's given me. Um, but more importantly, you know, just worship God together in one accord. And, and no, no matter what race you are, no matter what background you come from, no matter what denomination you are, it's that one moment that everybody's singing that one chorus together all to God. You know, everything else kind of just goes away, you know. And yeah. so that's that's really humbling for me to just be a, t a tool and a vessel in God's hands and, 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 and just be used by him in that in those moments. Man, that, that is awesome. That is, you know, and I've been in venues where, you know how it is. Sometimes churches can be a little segregated where, it, you know, I don't want the stigma of a white church or a black church or whatever that stuff is. But I've been in some places where it's just been the pure presence of God, all mm -hmm. colors, all races, and everybody is just in one accord, which is really, I feel like, a huge accomplishment for whoever it was that was actually uh I, w I went to israel holton's conference once and i remember just walking in the door and it was just like oh my god everybody you know people had on suits people had on jeans people had on hat it, it didn't matter and everybody was just so in tune with what was going on and it really was amazing so yeah. now i want to highlight a part of your career which i'm really impressed by and astounded by and you kind of already talked about uh songwriting and things like that you are a 2018 Rhythm of Gospel Award winner. Yeah. Now, y'all, not a nominee, y'all. Well, he he didn't just get nominated. He didn't just <laughs> skits yet. Yeah, wasn't just on the, the back end. And props to all the nominees. But my man won it. So what was that like to actually win? You know what I mean? Actually get a little something in your hand. You know what I'm saying? Put it on the you know championship yeah. ring. Yeah. Um. It's it was man, it words couldn't really describe the just the feeling of it because you know, you, you go through all this work of and and for me that the, I've been an independent artist for a long time. I, I was I was signed out for for a minute um with Four Year Soul Entertainment, which is was Kirk's uh management at the time, or still is. Um and during that time when I won that, um I was still with them. And mm -hmm. Um, you know, I've, I've really, really worked my entire life, you know, to just put out great quality music, um, besides the message and, 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 you know, the, the lyrics and, and, the, you know, all of that, you know, I'm a very, very perfectionist when it comes to music and my sound and because, you know, I, I know how it is to be independent and there's a lot of music that shouldn't be played <laughs> out on the radio waves because <laughs> this needs to go back and get some work you know so for for me to just kind of experience you know being blessed um and god blessing the work of my hands with that you know it just words couldn't really describe it you know and um i i'd still even like remembering and sitting there when they announced it i was like i looked at my road manager i said what <laughs> like that literally like word for word my face i'm just chilling they have the camera and everything and they said i was like what <laughs> and he starts laughing yeah and so um because i was actually nominated for five five different awards for that and so they they came out the gate with the number one and they hit it and i was like so shocked and surprised um but yeah man you know it's just it's just like i said it's really really um humbling to to see God just work and like yeah. seeing his promises fulfilled in every aspect, in every way, you know, and it just still blows my mind because I don't even expect it. And I probably, you know, at this point from hearing all these prophecies and things over my life, I should probably be like, okay, God, you know what I mean? But I still <laughs> am like, <laughs> like what? You know? So yeah, it, it's, a, it's, a, it was an exciting moment. Nice. That's awesome. Is there anyone that you want to collaborate with that you haven't yet? Yeah, there's a lot of people that I actually, you know, want to do something with. You know, I would I would love to to work with with Kirk. We we've talked about that in the past. Um, so, you know, I, I really want to do something with Kirk. Um, 
also Corn Hawthorne. She's she's killing out out in the game right now. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I really, really would love to collab with her and do something with her. Um, J. Kaylin Carr. Um, and there's just so many different artists. Um, Jordan Felice on the CCM side, Torn Wells, like all those cats. I would love to oh, just sit oh, and work with them and, and be like, man, let's let's do something great, you know. So, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like one, one out of those is going to happen, if not multiple, this year, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. So oh, I'm, I'm just I'm yeah. expecting it. Yeah, I'm expecting it. That is awesome. So let me ask you this, man, because – you're at a level now where, you know, award shows and you're touring and you're doing a lot of different things. Is there a difference? Should there be a difference? Do you try to avoid there being a difference <clears throat> between ministering a song or just performing a song? Because now you're kind of doing it in different venues. And I know sometimes you might be in a situation, oh, Brandon, we only got time, just two songs, if you can come out here or whatever, or you maybe can't do everything you want. Is there, or do you try to fight that and try to keep a balance? Um, I don't ever think for, for me, I can only speak for me, that it's it's not really a fight for me. Um, yeah. I know what the separation is. You know, I, I, I've matured enough to understand that when it's time for worship and it's time to enter the throne room of God, gifts won't get you to the throne room of God. Yeah. Only the yeah. access that God has given you and the anointing on, on your life to do what, what you're called to do, will make that happen. Um, you know, I, since I am an artist, I am a worship leader, I'm both, um, there are those two different components and aspects to me. When I'm booked for a show and a concert, I'm going to give you a level of en entertainment, and we're going to have fun, and it's going to be great, and we're going to vibe. But at, for me, in my show, I, I have intentionally put a segment where we do have a worship moment, there is a ministry moment because that's who I am. That's who I am as a person. It's who I am as an artist, and it's who I am as a worshiper. Worshiper. So for me, I, it's not hard, hard for me to compartmentalize the two. Um, but yes, I do believe, and I do think, you know, a lot of mentors should should kind of give the uh, the you know the, the distinction between those um, yeah. because there's a lot. I think we miss it, uh, miss the mark sometimes. Um, as, as artists, you know, when we're brought into a church to minister, but we're, you know, we're performing. Um, if it's labeled as, you know, this is a concert, it's a show, it's at a church, then okay, it's a concert and a show. You know, mm -hmm. do what you want to do. You're the artist, you know, in the moment. So, but if it's a Sunday morning, you're just supposed to get up there and lead the people of God, lead the people of God, you know, don't perform. Minister. So. That's that. That's that's my opinion. That that's from that's from. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we talked about you know dreaming bigger and uh, basically how how you would you know have a big dream and you're like God is like no you know you were capping him. What is your ultimate goal for your career in ministry? Um, my, I, and, and I want to say because we just talked about the two differences. Because I am, I am a worship pastor. I'm on staff at a church part time in San Antonio. Um, you know, so I do hold that title. You know what I mean of, of pastor. And so, what I, my ultimate goal for my ministry is to see the next generation of worshipers rise up to their potential and to their greatness and to their calling and completely find their identity mm -hmm. and who God called them to be. And I, I want to father that in them. I want to mentor that in them. So my whole goal is is to always have that and, and really apostle that in them um, through, throughout my life, throughout my journey as a minister, as a pastor um, of music and worship. Yeah. Now, as you know, my music career, I mean, the sky is the limit. You know, I have so many goals. I can't just say, man, when I reach this goal, I've done it. Right. I got so many milestones and so many things that I want to achieve because my my, my music career is is my job. You know, that's, uh, and, and yes, I'm a Christian artist and it's Christian music and I'm touching hearts of people because the message is the same, but the method of what I use is different. You know, I always say that, you know, music is just the vehicle to get the message to the hearts of the people. Mm -hmm. I always say that. That's and good. so, you know, my goal is, you know, I want to own a label company. I want to, I want to be able to be, you know, the guide to open doors for artists that, you know, they're just trying to make it. 
you're just trying to do it. You're right. trying to do it at a high level. You know, so that's that's one goal. That's one aspiration. You know, of course, I want to do the Grammys thing, and I, you know, you know, all of these things. You know what I mean? I have all of those goals and those thoughts and those, you know, uh, milestones, and I will achieve it. You know, and it's just just working and hustling and grinding. You know, and, and God will bless your yes. And so yeah. He already has blessed my yes. So I'm gonna just keep saying yes. <laughs> that's 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 amazing, man. And the fact that you even just said bless your yes, that goes into yeah. we, I just say yes to God. I mean, yeah. the fact that I'm even sitting here and if you knew how me and her, it was just saying yes, like yeah. I want to do a show. We only yeah. <laughs> didn't even know her, just she said yes and now you We're said We're practically besties now. Now right? we just but <laughs> you know, yeah. it's it's just yeah. how things work out and now we're talking to you. So yeah. I love that it's an inspiration to people that hear that. All right, we about to let you go, man. You've been so gracious with your time. And I know this is a music show. But. And we keep it musically, you know, but now you are in San Antonio. Yes, I am. And I used to work, I'm here in Las Vegas. I used to work a job where I would meet people. I was at a front desk, one of the hotels, meet people all the time. And every person I met from San Antonio, I would kind of do it as a break the ice kind of joke. I'm like, do you know anything about the Spurs? And the look I would get <laughs> would be like, how could you? What kind of? Of course, I know something about the Spurs. So before you continue your question, okay, I'm gonna pause you there, and I didn't plan this at all. Okay, I didn't plan this at all. But but uh, oh. I didn't plan this at all. Okay, I promise. Okay. But but now, just because like I'm wearing the hat, okay, <laughs> because I'm wearing the hat, does not make me a complete Spurs fan. Ooh, ooh, okay. I'm a San Antonio fan. Okay. I gotta represent where I live. Okay. Right. But go ahead and ask your question. <laughs> <laughs> so right. So I and the thing is, man, when we first even prepped this interview for you, it was a couple weeks ago, and they were kind of struggling, but now they're kind of they're kind of coming back up. So let me. What is your prognostication? for this season, for the team. like See, San Antonio, people don't know, if you don't understand, it's a one-sport team, city. So they only had the Spurs. There's no other, kind of like right now with Vegas, we only have the hockey team. The Raiders are coming. But anyway. Whoa. We'll get in there later. What is your prognostication <laughs> for the team this year? Are they making the playoffs? Um, They're going to make the playoffs because they always do, and Pop is still their coach. See that? See the ah. arrogance? You hear that? See how he just I mean, said that? Just... They always do. Yeah. Now, are they going to go far in the playoffs? Absolutely not. <laughs> a realist. Um, I, I, am, I will say, because I used to be diehard Spurs fan, okay? Yeah. Like, during, for several, I mean, the whole, our peak of everything that we were, everything we did, I was in it, right? Since everybody retired... <laughs> I I'm not a Spurs fan. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. I'm a Lakers fan. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. She's okay. A, this is an LA girl you That's talking right. to right here. So. Okay. Yeah, and and I, I'm a Kobe fan. I'm a Lakers fan, and I'm a LeBron fan. And so the fact that he's over on the Lakers now, like, I'm I'm pulling for them. I want them to do something this year. Brandon. Oh, yes, put it in the atmosphere. I don't know if you need to be saying all this, man. Oh, He's, no, he should. Ooh, the San Antonio folk might hear that and be. And, I, and I'm going to say this, too. I think Pop needs to retire. Oh! The, oh what? <laughs> I do. I think he needs to. He, he got five championships? Wow. He, he's good. He's set. It's time for him to chill. I mean, look at, you know, Phil Jackson. You know, he's he been retired. He got some rings on him. He got some championships. You guys are ready. <laughs> B. Watson setting the world on fire this morning, y'all. And I, I'm sticking to it. <laughs> a man of his word. Yes, he said what he said. He said, he said. He said what he said. I was, and I'm a Pats fan, too. And the Pats aren't, you know. Yeah, I know. You just but struggle. I'm still sticking by him. Man. Well, this has been more than I thought it would be, but I love it. Yes. I don't even do we got anything. I don't how we gonna stop right there. Cause yeah. I mean, I he just he just dropped the mic on y'all. Yeah. He don't care. You know what I'm saying? Come see him if you wanna see him. Brandon, and they probably gonna see you. Now let them know where you they can find you. Give them all the plugs. All your handles. Awesome. Yeah. 
definitely follow me on social media. I'm 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 a social media junkie fanatic. I think everybody that you know has to be on social media. Ha- you have to be. Um, but you can follow me at B Watts Music, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook at B Watts Music, or my full website bwattsmusic.com. All right, we appreciate it. Uh, Thank you so much. I'm still recovering from from the Spurs. Thank Why? you. Lakers. I Lakers. just man, he just he went. Well, I was trying to fish a little bit, and he gave me a wow. Oh, let that bless you. <laughs> I'm, I'm being blessed. I'm being blessed. Let it sit in your soul, brother. Oh, yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> this is awesome. Our favorite scenes. I'm so excited for this interview with Awesome. Tip, any any last words? Oh, thank you so much thank for you, being man. with us this morning. Thank you, man. Of course, check us out on the website. Of course, um, I mean, he, he got me so... <laughs> <laughs> Discombobulated now. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I, may, I messed you up, huh? He yeah. really did. I can't believe. Like, man, MightySharpShow.com. We've got new shows coming out every week. Of course, this will be on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes. Please subscribe. Give us a like. As always, you guys, stay sharp. Brandon, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it, man. Be blessed in your career as well. Definitely, definitely. Thanks. Appreciate Thank you. This has been a production of the Mighty Sharp Network. Executive producer is Monty Mont. Watch the corners and always stay sharp.